In order to grow an ever-increasing amount of food to feed our ever-increasing population, farmers need to use fertilizers. Fertilizers contain the inorganic nutrients that plants need to grow and which are removed from the soil as a part of the plant material itself when they are harvested. Thus, the fertilizers are needed to restore the nutrients to the soil that have been removed. The traditional method of fertilizing soil uses organic matter, either manure from domestic animals or humans, or composted plant matter. In the 19th century, huge deposits of guano produced from seabird droppings were discovered that were very rich in sodium nitrate. This solved the problem for a while, but within a few generations it had all been used up. The scale of modern farming is such that there is simply not enough of this type of organic material available. In addition, these fertilizers are relatively bulky to transport and to apply to the fields. Most fertilizers used by commercial farmers are inorganic fertilizers. On the packets you will see NPK values. These refer to the percentages of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium that they contain. Three of the most important elements for plant growth. Potassium and phosphorus are not uncommon in nature in forms that can be used by plants. But nitrogen is mainly found in the atmosphere as the almost inert nitrogen gas. One of the main sources of usable nitrogen in nature is lightning. The massively high temperatures in lightning bolts cause the nitrogen to react to form nitrogen oxides which in turn combine with rain to form nitric acid and then nitrates. Some plants, too, can harness bacteria to convert nitrogen gas to a usable form, a process called nitrogen fixation, but most cannot. In 1909, Fritz Haber successfully synthesized ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gases in the laboratory. By 1913, a team at BASF, led by Carl Bosch, had developed this into an industrial process, known now as the Haber-Bosch process. Nitrogen and hydrogen are combined at high temperature and pressure in the presence of an iron catalyst, and the process produces ammonia. The mixture of gases is cooled, and the ammonia which liquefies at only minus 33 degrees Celsius, becomes liquid and is easily removed. The remaining nitrogen and hydrogen are fed back into the beginning of the process. Naturally, it is not possible to replicate the high pressures used in the harbour process, but it is possible to carry it out after a fashion in the laboratory, at room temperature and to show that ammonia is indeed produced. We can show that this gas is indeed ammonia by carrying out a few tests. First of all, it is alkaline, as can be seen by the changing colour of universal indicator. There are very few alkaline gases, and certainly no others that are likely to be present here. Secondly, if a bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid is held near the outflow, we can clearly see the white fumes of ammonium chloride being formed. And finally, we can use Nestler's reagent. This is a diagnostic test for ammonia and its compounds. It is rarely used in schools these days, as it contains toxic mercury iodide in very concentrated corrosive sodium hydroxide. The orange colour is diagnostic of ammonia. Ammonia itself is not very useful as a fertiliser. It is a gas, though very soluble in water, and it is toxic and corrosive at high concentrations. Ammonium compounds, however, prepared by reacting ammonia with different acids, are solids and generally harmless. In this experiment, 
We are going to make another ammonium compound used in fertilizers, ammonium sulfate.